But what's what's the Kingslayer? Kingslayer. What, what are they talking about there? Is that the, that is that Wally Lewis in a Test match? That's Wally Lewis, and the story is that um, in the first Test in Brisbane, Olsen won the man of the match, and Olsen went to shake Wally's hand after the game because Wally was his hero, and Wally brushed him. So Olsen said, "Okay, I'm going to raise the black flag here." and came out and won the man of the match in the second test and treated Wally in a way. Both All those tests are on YouTube and no one has ever treated Wally Lewis like that. And Wally, in his two autobiographies, never mentioned Olsen's name. But um, in, I spoke to Wally and he's now com- he doesn't really have that same competitive angst that he had before. I think that uh, surgery he's had, he's had a brush with mortality. And he um, has, for the first time, admitted that Olsen got over him just the speed and the size There'd never been a 5'8 that big and that mobile, and it was a prototype that's quite normal today. But Wally struggled by 1986, the next year, Wally had found out a way to to combat it. But he certainly slayed the king, you know, the immortal Wally Lewis in a way that no one ever has. Patrick, you've obviously followed rugby league for a long time, written obviously books and articles all about that. What's your take on the current situation and the place that rugby league plays in people's lives? Uh, I am of the belief that rugby league is different to other sports. I believe rugby league is definitively an essential service. It was founded to give uh, people that were disadvantaged by opportunity a, a fair go. It, I, I was at a rugby league historians conference, which was uh, Revenge of the Nerds, um, and, and we're all there swapping our tails. And the guy got up at the front and said, there's no equivalent of this in rugby union. Uh, it doesn't exist. People just don't care as much about union as they do about rugby league. And I like to say that uh, in rugby league, like the Vikings, you burn the boats. There's often they don't have a, a lot of the players don't have a plan B like the guys in rugby do that. They can't go and become stockbrokers. It's often off to the building site. So you just get higher levels of passion. And I remember growing up and the league players were, were with us. They were Stormont and Packers and they were working with us. And it was amazing just seeing a guy working in a factory on during the week would come out and be this superstar on, uh, on, on, on the Sunday. 